This is chapter 1.3, Chemical Properties. How would you describe a piece of wood before and after it is burned? Has it changed color? Does it have the same texture? The original piece of wood changed, and physical properties alone can't describe what happened to it. Chemical properties describe matter based on its ability to change into new matter that has totally different properties. So this is going to be different from physical properties that you know, don't change the subject, substance at all. Chemical properties are, are going to change the substance. Uh, the new substances um, have very different properties than they did before. For example, when wood is burned, ash and smoke are created. These new substances have very different properties than the original piece of wood had. Uh, a couple of examples of chemical properties would be flammability, obviously, the ability to burn. Ash and smoke can't burn, so they have the chemical property of non-flammability as opposed to the wood. Um, another example of a chemical property is reactivity. That's the ability of two or more substances to combine um, to form two or more new substances. Um, an example would be reactivity with acid, like an um, like with acid rain that tends to degrade the soil or degrade you know even like cars and stuff if you're dealing with like out in LA they get more acid rain um, if I in the lab I'll take hydrochloric acid and put it on different substances in the chemical hood and you'll see that they have you'll have a react um, reaction to that um, and you can also get reactivity with oxygen um, a lot of things start to rust as well if they're exposed to oxygen for too long how can you tell a physical property from a chemical one? You could basically observe physical properties without ch um, changing the identity. A flower is, you know it's a flower because it's soft, the petals are soft, it might have a scent to it. So those are all physical properties. Um, even if you like pulled off some of the leaves or petals, you're not really changing the identity of the flower. Uh, chemical properties aren't as easy to observe. For example, you see, you can't see that wood is flammable. Um, only after you burn it, then you can tell that it has a chemical property of flammability. It's important to know what the chemical properties of a substance is so that you could use the right materials. When you look at kids' pajamas, um, if you look at the tags, they use special substances now uh, that are non-flammable, and that's important because in the middle of the night, if you have a kid in their pajamas and there's a f house fire, you don't want their pajamas to catch on fire. So they use um, some materials that contain chemicals that are non-flammable, so hopefully that their pajamas won't catch on fire. Scientists really rely on these characteristic properties of different substances to identify and classify those substances. Um, for example, if you look at the periodic table, um, the latest ones that were discovered were like element 118, 116. I'll talk about more of um, those elements in chapter 5. But the latest one to be discovered was element 117. And that belonged in the second to last column over on the right hand side. Now, scientists didn't, uh, they couldn't discover this element. They actually, these were man made elements. They created them in a lab. But they knew what they were looking for. They knew that this element that they were looking for was going to be in that particular column. It was going to have some characteristic properties um, similar to the ones in the column. So they were looking for um, an element that would be maybe highly reactive to maybe the orange column that you see on the left hand side. Uh, they knew it had to have 117 protons. They knew approximately how much it weighed. That 292 is how much it, like the mass is. Um, so they used char characteristic properties to help um, figure out what they were looking for and then when they were analyzing the data they could tell did we discover it or did we not discover it. Alright, chemical changes, so we had properties, properties um, that ID uh, a substance. Now chemical changes happen when one or more substances are changed into new substances and they have totally new and different properties. Um, you can see that it's totally changed into something else. You can't tell what kind of chemical properties a substance has until it goes through a chemical change. For physical properties, you can tell. You can see its color, you can feel it for the texture, you can see its size, you can even check out its density, um, if, it, if it's heavy or if it floats, stuff like that. Those are physical properties. For chemical properties, you can't really tell if it's flammable, if it reacts with acid, um, 
stuff like that. If it, you know, if it produces light when a reaction happens, you can't tell any of that until it actually goes through the chemical change. You're not going to be able to reverse the chemical change. So an example would be like baking a cake. You have all your ingredients, you put them together, you put it in the oven, and you get this cake. You can't reverse that. You can't get the original eggs out of it. You can't get, you know, the flour and the sugar. So you know that a chemical change has happened because you can't reverse it and the identity of all the substances has changed. Signs that a chemical change is happening would be like a change in color. So when you see the leaves changing in the fall, that's a chemical change happening in the tree. Um, you know, nutrients are no longer being provided to the leaves. You get different pigments are turned off. Um, so you get a, a chemical reaction happening in the leaves. Uh, also, when you get like different odors that happen, like when milk goes sour, that's a chemical change. Um, when even like if eggs go bad, you smell like the sulfur, that's a chemical change. So let's see, production of heat. Um, sometimes um, when two things react together, they produce a lot of heat. We're going to do a reaction in class where we take aluminum and hydrochloric acid and they're going to react together and they're actually going to form, uh, there's going to be a lot of heat given off on the um, Erlenmeyer flask during this uh, reaction. Also, when you take like hydrogen in this elemental form and oxygen in this elemental form, if they join together, they're going to make H2O, and that gives off a ton of heat. That actually helps uh, space shuttles get, you know, into orbit with the hydrogen and oxygen reacting. So a chemical change. Um, anytime you see bubbles being produced, you know that a chemical change is happening. Like the effervescent tablet in water, um, that's like for heartburn or, or um, you know, calming your stomach. You can drink that. Uh, that tablet's going to totally disappear, but um, it's going to react to the water. When you see acids uh, interacting with different elements, they'll kind of give off bubbles like that. We'll have a lab that kind of shows that as well. Um, sometimes you'll have a situation where sound or light's given off. We'll do a really cool experiment in January where we'll take a glow stick and we'll heat it up, and the chemicals in that glow stick will start reacting quicker so a chemical change is happening and they'll they'll give off a really bright light so um, this was a pretty short video but I just want the main concept I want you to get out of this is that chemical properties are different from physical properties because chemical properties will change the identity of the substance a chemical change cannot be reversed um, you will get a totally different substance and you can't get the original substances back so Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon.